August 26, Jeremiah remains in Judah. King Nebuchadnezzar had told Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, to find Jeremiah. See that he isn't hurt, he said. Look after him well and give him anything he wants. So Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, Nebuchadnezzar, a chief officer, Nergal Sherezer, the king's advisor, and the other officers of Babylon's king sent messengers to bring Jeremiah out of the prison. They put him under the care of Gedaliah, son of Ahikam, and grandson of Shaphan, who took him back to his home. So Jeremiah stayed in Judah among his own people. The Lord had given the following message to Jeremiah while he was still in prison. Say to Ebed-Melech the Ethiopian, This is what the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of Israel, says, I will do to this city everything I have threatened. I will send disaster, not prosperity. You will see its destruction but I will rescue you from those you fear so much. Because you trusted me, I will give you your life as a reward. I will rescue you and keep you safe. I, the Lord, have spoken. The Lord gave a message to Jeremiah after Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, had released him at Ramah. He had found Jeremiah bound in chains among all the other captives of Jerusalem and Judah who were being sent to exile in Babylon. The captain of the guard called for Jeremiah and said, The Lord your God has brought this disaster on this land just as he said he would. For these people have sinned against the Lord and disobeyed him. That is why it happened. But I am going to take off your chains and let you go. If you want to come with me to Babylon, you are welcome. I will see that you are well cared for. But if you don't want to come, you may stay here. The whole land is before you. Go wherever you like. If you decide to stay, then return to Gedaliah, son of Ahikam, and grandson of Shaphan. He has been appointed governor of Judah by the king of Babylon. Stay there with the people he rules. But it's up to you. Go wherever you like. Then Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, gave Jeremiah some food and money and let him go. So Jeremiah returned to Gedaliah, son of Ahikam, at Mizpah, and he lived in Judah with the few who were still left in the land. The temple destroyed. On August 14 of that year, which was the 19th year of King Nebuchadnezzar's reign, Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard and an official of the Babylonian king, arrived in Jerusalem. He burned down the temple of the Lord, the royal palace, and all the houses of Jerusalem. He destroyed all the important buildings in the city. Then he supervised the entire Babylonian army as they tore down the walls of Jerusalem on every side. Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, then took as exiles the rest of the people who remained in the city, the defectors who had declared their allegiance to the king of Babylon, and the rest of the population. But the captain of the guard allowed some of the poorest people to stay behind in Judah to care for the vineyards and fields. The Babylonians broke up the bronze pillars in front of the Lord's temple, the bronze water carts, and the great bronze basin called the sea, and they carried all the bronze away to Babylon. They also took all the ash buckets, shovels, lamp snuffers, dishes, and all the other bronze articles used for making sacrifices at the temple. Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, also took the incense burners and basins, and all the other articles made of pure gold or silver. The weight of the bronze from the two pillars, the sea, and the water carts was too great to be measured. These things had been made for the Lord's temple in the days of King Solomon. Each of the pillars was twenty-seven feet tall. The bronze capital on top of each pillar was seven and one-half feet high and was decorated with a network of bronze pomegranates all the way around. Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, took with him his prisoners, Siraiah, the high priest, Zephaniah, the priest of the second rank, and the three chief gatekeepers. And from among the people still hiding in the city, he took an officer who had been in charge of the Judean army, five of the king's personal advisors, the army commander's chief secretary, who was in charge of recruitment, and sixty other citizens. Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, took them all to the king of Babylon at Riblah. And there at Riblah, in the land of Hamath, the king of Babylon had them all put to death. So the people of Judah were sent into exile from their land. From Jeremiah On August 17 of that year, which was the 19th year of King Nebuchadnezzar's reign, Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard and an official of the Babylonian king, arrived in Jerusalem. He burned down the temple of the Lord, the royal palace, and all the houses of Jerusalem. He destroyed all the important buildings in the city. Then he supervised the entire Babylonian army as they tore down the walls of Jerusalem on every side. 
Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, then took as exile some of the poorest of the people, the rest of the people who remained in the city, the defectors who had declared their allegiance to the king of Babylon, and the rest of the craftsmen. But Nebuzaradan allowed some of the poorest people to stay behind in Judah, to care for the vineyards and fields. The Babylonians broke up the bronze pillars in front of the Lord's temple, the bronze water carts, and the great bronze basin called the Sea, and they carried all the bronze away to Babylon. They also took all the ash buckets, shovels, lamp snuffers, basins, dishes, and all the other bronze articles used for making sacrifices at the temple. Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, also took the small bowls, incense burners, basins, pots, lampstands, dishes, bowls used for liquid offerings, and all the other articles made of pure gold or silver. The weight of the bronze from the two pillars, the sea with the twelve bronze oxen beneath it, and the water carts was too great to be measured. These things had been made for the Lord's temple in the days of King Solomon. Each of the pillars was twenty-seven feet tall and eighteen feet in circumference. They were hollow, with walls three inches thick. The bronze capital on top of each pillar was seven and a half feet high and was decorated with a network of bronze pomegranates all the way around. There were ninety-six pomegranates on the sides and a total of one hundred on the network around the top. Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, took with him as prisoners Sireah the high priest, Zephaniah the priest of the second rank, and the three chief gatekeepers. And from among the people still hiding in the city, he took an officer who had been in charge of the Judean army, seven of the king's personal advisers, the army commander's chief secretary who was in charge of recruitment, and sixty other citizens. Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, took them all to the king of Babylon at Riblah. And there at Riblah in the land of Hamath, the king of Babylon had them all put to death. So the people of Judah were sent into exile from their land. From Second Chronicles The Lord, the God of their ancestors, repeatedly sent his prophets to warn them, for he had compassion on his people and his temple. But the people mocked these messengers of God and despised their words. They scoffed at the prophets until the Lord's anger could no longer be restrained and nothing could be done. The Fall of Jerusalem So the Lord brought the king of Babylon against them. The Babylonians killed Judah's young men, even chasing after them into the temple. They had no pity on the people, killing both young men and young women, the old and the infirm. God handed all of them over to Nebuchadnezzar. The king took home to Babylon all the articles, large and small, used in the temple of God, and the treasures from both the Lord's temple and from the palace of the king and his officials. Then his army burned the temple of God, tore down the walls of Jerusalem, burned all the palaces, and completely destroyed everything of value. The few who survived were taken as exiles to Babylon, and they became servants to the king and his sons until the kingdom of Persia came to power. So the message of the Lord spoken through Jeremiah was fulfilled. The land finally enjoyed its Sabbath rest, lying desolate until the seventy years were fulfilled, just as the prophet had said. Sorrow in Jerusalem Jerusalem once so full of people, is now deserted. She, who was once great among the nations, now sits alone like a widow. Once the queen of all the earth, she is now a slave. She sobs through the night, tears stream down her cheeks. Among all her lovers, there is no one left to comfort her. All her friends have betrayed her and become her enemies. Judah has been led away into captivity, oppressed with cruel slavery. She lives among foreign nations and has no place of rest. Her enemies have chased her down, and she has nowhere to turn. The roads to Jerusalem are in mourning, for crowds no longer come to celebrate the festivals. The city gates are silent. Her priests groan. Her young women are crying. How bitter is her fate. Her oppressors have become her masters, and her enemies prosper. For the Lord has punished Jerusalem for her many sins. Her children have been captured and taken away to distant lands. All the majesty of beautiful Jerusalem has been stripped away. Her princes are like starving deer searching for pasture. They are too weak to run from the pursuing enemy. In the midst of her sadness and wandering, Jerusalem remembers her ancient splendor. But now she has fallen to her enemy, and there is no one to help her. Her enemy struck her down and laughed as she fell. 
Jerusalem has sinned greatly, so she has been tossed away like a filthy rag. All who once honored her now despise her, for they have seen her stripped naked and humiliated. All she can do is groan and hide her face. She defiled herself with immorality and gave no thought to her future. Now she lies in the gutter with no one to lift her out. Lord, see my misery, she cries. The enemy has triumphed. The enemy has plundered her completely, taking every precious thing she owns. She has seen foreigners violate her sacred temple, the place the Lord had forbidden them to enter. Her people groan as they search for bread. They have sold their treasures for food to stay alive. O Lord, look, she mourns, and see how I am despised. Does it mean nothing to you, all you who pass by? Look around and see if there is any suffering like mine, which the Lord brought on me when he erupted in fierce anger. He has sent fire from heaven that burns in my bones. He has placed a trap in my path and turned me back. He has left me devastated, racked with sickness all day long. He wove my sins into ropes to hitch me to a yoke of captivity. The Lord sapped my strength and turned me over to my enemies. I am helpless in their hands. The Lord has treated my mighty men with contempt. At his command, a great army has come to crush my young warriors. The Lord has trampled his beloved city like grapes are trampled in a wine press. For all these things I weep. Tears flow down my cheeks. No one is here to comfort me. Any who might encourage me are far away. My children have no future, for the enemy has conquered us. Jerusalem reaches out for help, but no one comforts her. Regarding his people Israel, the Lord has said, Let their neighbors be their enemies. Let them be thrown away like a filthy rag. The Lord is right, Jerusalem says, for I rebelled against him. Listen, people everywhere, look upon my anguish and despair, for my sons and daughters have been taken captive to distant lands. I begged my allies for help, but they betrayed me. My priests and leaders starved to death in the city, even as they searched for food to save their lives. Lord, see my anguish. My heart is broken and my soul despairs, for I have rebelled against you. In the streets the sword kills, and at home there is only death. Others heard my groans, but no one turned to comfort me. When my enemies heard about my troubles, they were happy to see what you had done. Oh, bring the day you promised, when they will suffer as I have suffered. Look at all their evil deeds, Lord. Punish them as you have punished me for all my sins. My groans are many, and I am sick at heart."